In this chapter, we'll cover the basics of audio recording. Along the way, we'll apply what we've learned in chapters one and two. For this demonstration, we'll use an original song called Gonna Get You, written by Carter Honeycutt, performed by Janelle Lutz and Dave Whiting. Now right now, the song is just a guitar part and vocal. Open the file menu and select New Project. Let's use the Project Assistant to select a template that'll help us get going quickly. Click on the Recording tab. Now here you'll find several pre-configured templates, and the small text under the title suggests how to use them. Let's use the template for Acoustic Guitar Plus Vocal. And we'll also select Prompt for Project Location at the bottom of the Project Assistant and click Continue. To keep things simple, let's create a new project folder on the desktop. I'm going to give the project folder the same name as the song, Gonna Get You, then click Open. Well, here's the project window. Let's enlarge it using the handle at the lower right corner. You can see that the template contains two audio tracks that have already been named for their intended parts. If you look closely at the first track, you'll notice that the icons for Insert Effect State and EQ State are illuminated. This tells us that there are insert effects and EQ settings already active on this channel. The blue Send Effect State icon on track 2 tells us that Send Effects are in use as well. And you might notice a third track named Effects Channels. This is a folder track. If we click the folder icon, it opens to show us that a basic reverb effect has been added to this project. We'll discuss effects in more detail in Chapter 5. The next thing that we need to do is connect track 1 to the appropriate input on the audio interface. And the easiest way to do this is with the first tab in the inspector. This icon displays the input routing. Now, since the microphone for the guitar happens to be connected to input number 2, let's connect track 1 to input number 2, like this. And since the microphone for the vocals is connected to input number 1, let's connect track 2 to input 1, like this. The output will automatically connect to our only output bus, which is labeled here as Stereo Out. In order to hear the input signal, we have to turn on the input monitor for each track by clicking the small speaker icon. And in order to record the input signal, we have to arm each track. To do that, click on the Record Enable button. The button will turn red when enabled. OK, the tracks are now armed. We need one more device to help us set up the recording levels. Let's call up the Mix Console. Open the Devices menu and select Mix Console. I'm going to take just a moment here and resize the project window, move the transport panel, and adjust the size and layout of the mixer so that we can see everything we need on one screen. We'll go over the mixer in more detail in Chapter 5, but the basics are that the mixer has input channels, track channels, and output channels. Since the input monitor is active, we can see the input signal level here. You'll see the recorded level here, and the default position for the faders is zero. Anything above this level will overload the system and cause distortion, a condition known as clipping. You'll see the red light appear if clipping occurs. Clipping must be avoided during recording because it cannot be fixed later. For now, let's try to get our recording levels between minus 3 and minus 6. Our performer is already wearing headphones, which are connected directly to the MR816 audio interface. Let's record a few measures as a sound check. Press the record button on the transport panel. Are your volumes OK? Lovely, yes. That's brilliant. OK, rolling. Great. Looks like we're set to go. One last thing, let's give our performer a metronome to help her keep the timing consistent. The metronome is also known as a click track, and it can be turned on and off by pressing the C key on your computer's keyboard. You can also turn on the metronome using the menu here. You can adjust the sound and volume of the metronome using the metronome setup dialog. Here we go with take one.
nice job. The guitar performance was terrific. The vocal performance was good too, but there was one glitch, a cough in the middle. To listen to the performance, we need to disable the input monitor by deselecting the yellow speaker icon. Then return to the beginning and press play. Now, we could try to mix out the cough, since it happens between words, but because the voice and guitar were recorded at the same time, some of the coughing spilled into the guitar mic. So let's try this again, but record the guitar in one pass, and then overdub the vocal in a second pass. This will give us complete isolation on each part, and complete control after recording. Nice job. Now let's record the vocal. I don't hear anything. Ooh, 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 sunrise on my first day without you. Now I can see the hole in my heart. <laughs> Terrific take. There was a laugh between phrases, but that's no problem. Since we recorded the vocal in isolation, none of that laugh spilled onto the guitar track, and it can easily be edited out. We can use the waveform zoom to help get a better look at what's in each track. Let's edit out the talking before the take and the laughter. Zoom and scroll until you can see the part you want. Let's turn off the snap function to allow more flexibility in where we place the edits. Now I'll select the scissors tool from the toolbar, position the scissors each place I want to cut, and then click. Now I can use the eraser tool to remove the unwanted portions. Now these are very simple editing techniques compared to Cubase's rich set of editing functions, but they solve our immediate problem. Let's listen. Much better. We have a good start. Let's move on to chapter 4 and see how to use MIDI and some VST instruments to add more parts to our first tracks. <laughs> 